let me log into the Linux machine. So yes, in the last class we had discussed few Linux commands. What are they? We have talked about the ls command. What ls command does? It would show you the content of a given folder or it would show you a given file. Let me log into the machine and this is the command which you run if you are using a MacBook. Sorry. If you are using a MacBook. This is the command that you need to run from your command line and you will get logged into the remote Linux machine. And we have talked about one command, it's who am I. When you run that command on a Linux machine, it will show you which user you are currently logged in as. And once you logged into the remote Linux machine as user Ubuntu, and if you want to become the root user, this is the command that you need to run. It will make you the root user. Now you type who am I command, it will show you, you are the root user. And we have seen different different commands yesterday. One command is pwd. pwd command at any point of time, if you run it, it would show you which folder you are in right now. That's what pwd command would show you. And then there's a command cd. What cd command does is, it would take you to a folder. So, in other words, cd command will change your present working directory. You want to go to a different folder, you can run the command cd space. Then, which folder you want to go into. And then we discussed about the folder hierarchy. How does the Linux file system look like? It begins with a slash and inside that you can find different, different folders and subfolders. And we have also discussed about how do you find the absolute path of a folder, right? These things we discussed. And we discussed about some other commands. Touch is one Linux command using which you can create a new file and mkdir for creating a new folder. Touch space file name or mkdir space file name. Or uh, there's another command called man. As I told you, man is a Linux command using which you can read the documentation about other commands in Linux, for example, man space ls or man space touch, it would actually show you the detailed information or documentation about the given Linux commands. And then, then we have seen the nano editor, which is a editor in Linux. Nano space, if you put the file name, then the file get opened in, in a editor and you can type in and you can save the changes of the file and to create the file you can use this command touch and to edit this file you can use this command nano and nano command also be used to create a new file also in case you run this command nano space test.txt and if test.txt is not present in your machine what happens is a new file get created so it's not mandatory that you must create the file using touch command it can directly be created by using nano command and editing it. And these are the different commands we have seen and there's a command called rm. rm command will delete a file. Then there is a command cp for copy paste and there's another command called mv for cut paste and you know about what is mean by copy paste and what is meant by cut paste. cp means it will do a copy paste. I mean similar operation of copy paste in Windows. It will copy, do, create a duplicate file on the destination folder. That's what cp command will do. And mb command, it will do a cut paste. What that means is it will relocate the file to a different folder. And that's what these two commands will do in Linux. And that's, that's pretty much about the basic commands. So I will show you the syntax. So first of all, let me create a folder under slash home under slash ubuntu i'm creating a new folder called f100 this is a new folder i created i'm also creating a new file slash home under slash home slash ubuntu i'm creating a new file test.txt and now let's say you want to delete the file the command is rm space then the file name so the file is slash home 
ubuntu slash dot txt so run this command and what happens is the file get deleted now if you type this command ls slash from slash basil you don't see the file anymore i mean slash from slash ubuntu right now you type the command slash from slash ubuntu you won't see test.txt file anymore it got deleted that's what rm command will do it will delete a file from the file system and now i want to delete this folder f100 this is the path to the f100 and i can use the same rm command with an option hyphen r to delete a folder make a note if you want to delete a folder you should use this switch hyphen r along with your rm command hyphen r tells the rm command that do a recursive deletion what that means is delete this folder and all its content that's what mean by hyphen r option so if you want to delete a folder it is mandatory that you should use hyphen r option then only it will get deleted so rm command to delete a normal file rm hyphen r command to delete a folder and then you want to do a copy paste let's say i have some files under slash uh, think about this situation under slash i have a folder called home under home i have a file called test.txt then I, under slash i have another folder called etc under etc i have another folder called folder called apt so my intention is i want to copy this file test.txt which is there inside slash home to this location so in such cases cp command will help you do a copy paste what that means is copy this file and create a duplicate of this file in the apt folder that's what cp command will do or if you want to relocate the file you want to take the file from home and move the file into apt folder so that the file won't no more exist on home but it would be only there in apt in that case you want can use the mv command whatever the command is syntax will look like this first you put the source the command name space source space destination so can you tell me the command what if i have to copy this file to this location and what if i have to relocate this file to this location can you ping me the command that you would use cp or mv message me in the chat Mm -hmm. yeah first it should be source and then it would be destination so assume test.txt is the file in slash home which i want to copy so first you should put which file you want to copy later you put to which location you want to copy this is the syntax yeah cool 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 perfect so let us let us continue so now we will move on to a different topic user management in linux a very very important topic and please continue to work on that assignments which i uploaded to training door yesterday <coughs> complete the assignment if possible within uh, today and tomorrow because i because from tomorrow we will move on to some advanced linux training so before that you should be clear with the linux basics and you should be comfortable with the linux command line and that is the main intention of that is the main intention right so we will talk about 
the user management in Linux. So who is a user in Linux or who is a user in an operating system? I told you, you can run the command who am I at any point of time. It will show you which user you are currently logged in as. Right. So you always work as a user and that's what you do in your laptop also. Whenever you want to log into your laptop, first you have to provide a username and password and once you logged in, then you are going to work as that user that you logged in. So yes, operating system, I mean, user is nothing but a user of the operating system that you logged in to which and then whatever action that you do, you are creating a new file, you are deleting a file, you are using the copy command to copy a file from under, from one location to another. So any action you want to install a software or any action that you do on your operating system are owned by a user. It's a Linux user or Windows user who is making change to your operating system. That's what a user is, right? Okay. So in Linux, you can create, right? You already know there is a user called Ubuntu in your Linux machine by default. A user get created called Ubuntu when you create the machine in your AWS console. And there would be another default user called root. You know about these uses. And if you want, you can create more uses. It's up to you. So today we will talk about how you can create a user in Linux and how you can give permission to the user. What is a group? Group is nothing but set of uses. How you can create a group? How you can add a user to a group? How we can give permission to the users? All these things we will discuss today. How we can log in as the new user? Okay. So let's talk about that. <coughs> there is a Linux command called user add user add is the linux command using which you can create a new user user add space name of the user that you want to create this is the command to create a new user and if you want to create a new group the command is group add group add space name of the group that you want to create and what is a group group is nothing but a set of uses you can add a user to a group we can remove a user from a group right so if i tell you an example group is more easy to manage than uses think about you have some 10 uses and you want to give some permission to 10 uses so there are a set of permission that you want to give to 10 uses in that case you have to do a lot of work right first you will give one permission to one user then second permission to the same user then you will repeat for all 10 people so instead of that what you can really do is if you believe all 10 users need the same kind of permission you can create one group add every 10 people to the same group then give permission to the group automatically whatever permission is given to the group all the users of that group will inherit those permissions so if you have group then it would become more easy to manage whenever you want to give permission to a user simply add the user to the group then all the permission group have user will also inherit them so that is the importance of group it will make things more easy to manage and if you want to create a new group in linux this is the command that you need to use group add space name of the group that you want to create and now let's say you want to set a password for a user right why you want to set a password for the user it's recommended 
whenever you want to log into your laptop. It should be protected with a password. The user should also enter a password, then only he can log in. So if you want to set a password for a user, a Linux command called passwd space name of the user and run this command it will ask you to set a password for the given user you can set a new password then there are other user there is a command called add user add user then you specify the name of the user and name of the group so what this particular command does is it would add this existing user to this existing group so you are in a situation you have a user called basil and you have a group called devops and i want to add the user basil to the devops group then this is the command i can run add user space basil space devops what happens is the user basil get added to the group devops and like that there are different different commands available so let us take a look at it and i hope you are very clear with the user concept user is the one which you log in as when you want to log into an operating system you should be logging in as a user and that's what you did using your putty when you wanted to log into the remote Linux machine you open your putty then you provided the username as ubuntu and then you logged into the remote machine so on the remote machine you log in as ubuntu you want to become root you run the command sudo su hyphen root to become root so su is the linux command if you want to log in as a different user or switch to a different user su space hyphen space name of the user that you want to go into let's say i have created a user called basil and now i want to log in as user basil this is the command i can use su space hyphen space basil then I have to enter the password of Basil. Then I am logged in as Basil. Like that, these are different commands. And later we will see how you can give permission to the users. As I told you, either you can directly give permission to a user or you can give permission to a group. Both are fine. If you give permission to a group, then the users who are member of that group will inherit that permission automatically okay so let us go ahead and create user i want to create a user called basil in my linux machine okay there is one more thing that i want to tell you when you create a linux user Every Linux user in Linux, those users that you create also, they will have a home folder. Just like in Windows, each user in your Windows PC get a different desktop. Right? When when the different user log in, they will see different different desktops, right? Similarly, in Linux also, there is a home folder that every Linux user will get whenever a user get created. So when you run the user add command, you can specify the settings as options. So user add, user add space basil is the command to create a user called basil in your machine that you already know. What I am saying is in between you can put some option to customize the user settings. You can decide what is going to be the home folder of basil what is going to be the primary group of basil every user must have one group it's mandatory every user that you create in linux must have one group it's mandatory if you don't specify a group then a group get created with the same name as the user and that will become the user primary group make a note let's say when you run the user add command you can put some options in between there is an option, for example, there is an option called hyphen D. Hyphen D, then you can specify what is going to be the home folder of Basil. You can mention slash home slash Basil. I want this to be the home folder of Basil. I can put other options also such as hyphen G. Hyphen G, DevOps. What this means is 
basil must be added to the devops as the primary group every user must have a primary group hyphen g devops option tell the user add command that basil user must be created and he must be added to this group as his primary group so like that there are different different options available along with the user add command and if you want to see that in detail detail you can run this command man space user add right you want to know the syntax or documentation about the user add command you can type man space user add okay i got disconnected let me log in once again Right. Okay. Man space user add. You already know about the man command. It would show you the documentation about other commands in Linux. So type man space user add. It would show you the documentation about the user add command. What you see is the syntax first. User add space login name of the user user add space basil and in between you can put some options so take a look at what are the options available there's an option called hyphen d i told you that's when you specify what is going to be the home directory of the user if you don't specify this option right all these options are optional you don't need to mandatorily put these options you can simply type the command user add space basil that's enough without giving any option you can type user add space basil that will also work what will happen in that case in that case the home folder of the user by default it will be slash home slash basil make a note if you don't specify the home folder of a user using hyphen D option, by default, this would become the home folder. Like that, there are different different settings that you can find. If you scroll down, you can find more options, hyphen G option. This is where you specify what is going to be the primary group of the user. If you don't mention hyphen G switch, so in other words, what I am trying to tell you is, you can run the command user add hyphen g devops space basil. The actual command is user add space basil. This is an option. So what this option tell the user add command is, the user basil will be created and devops will become the primary group of basil. That's what hyphen g option tells you. Or you can also put other option hyphen D to decide what is going to be the home folder of basil. If you don't put this by default, it's going to be slash home slash basil. If you don't put this option by default, what happens is a group get created with the same name as the username and that would become the primary group of basil. Right. So uh, what I'm trying to say is these options are optional. You want to put it, you can put it. They will customize the user settings. And like that hyphen G option, one user can be added to n number of groups. One primary group and n number of secondary groups. It is possible that one user can be a member of multiple groups. So you want to specify a number of group the user to be a member of you can use hyphen capital G option then put the groups separated by a comma and like that there are different different options you can find hyphen M option by default this home folder is not physically created if you want the folder to be physically created use the hyphen M option which will make sure that the folder is physically created even though you set the home folder what I'm trying to say is that home folder will not be present on your Linux file system. You have to run the mkdir command to create it. 
So you don't want to run the mkdir command instead. You want the home folder to be created automatically. Simply put hyphen m as a option, then the folder get created. Then if you come down, there are many options available. Uh, you want to specify which command line the user need to use. In Linux, there are different type of command line. By default, you see a command line called bash. And there are other command line also in your Linux machine. Just for your information. And yeah, so there are many options available. I'm not going through each of them. Let me first create a group. What is the command to create a group? Group add space name of the group that you want to create. Group add space DevOps. It would create a group called DevOps. I want to create another group called Developers. This is the command for that. Group add finance. It would create a group called finance. So group add is the Linux command using which you can create a new group. Group add space name of the group that you want to create. These groups are created in my Linux machine, DevOps group, developers group, and finance group. Now I want to create a new user. Right? I want to create a new user. I can run this command. User add space giddy. What this particular command does is it would create a new Linux user called giddy in my Linux machine. And as you might have noticed, I didn't use any option while creating the user giddy. It's not mandatory. You can simply run it without any option. In that case, what will happen? The default settings will be taken for giddy. What are the default settings? The home folder of giddy would become slash home slash giddy. And this folder will not be created physically. As I told you, by default, it won't be created physically. This would become the home folder of giddy. What would become the primary group of Giri? It would become Giri itself. Since I didn't mention hyphen G option, what happens is a group get created with the same name as username and that would become the primary group of the user. And you want the user to be added to n number of secondary groups, you could have run this hyphen G option. So we didn't do any of these things. and this folder is not physically created. Am I right? If you use hyphen M option, the folder could have been physically created. Otherwise, it won't get created. You should use the mkdir command to create it. All right, so let me create one more user with some options I'm doing. User add hyphen D. What is hyphen D? You can specify the home folder of the user. Let's say I want the home folder of the user to be user local basil. This is what I want basil's home folder to be. I'm planning to create a new user called basil. Username is basil. User add space basil. In between, you put hyphen D option to indicate which is the home folder of basil. Then hyphen M option, which will make sure that the home folder is physically created hyphen m switch will make sure that the given home folder is physically created hyphen g devops what does this mean hyphen g indicate that what is going to be the primary group of the user it's going to be devops so in this case no new groups get created but there is a existing group called devops which would become the primary group of the user that I am creating. Or in other words, Basil's primary group would become DevOps. Then hyphen S option if you want to put bin bash the command line. Which command line do you want to use for Basil in Linux? There are different type of command line. Something we will talk about it in detail. So I want Basil to use this particular command line or this particular shell. Then this is the command for that. Then hyphen capital G finance developers. 
so what hyphen capital G option do it would specify the list of group to which the user will be a member of so basil will be a member of DevOps group finance group and developers group with DevOps group being the primary group run this command what happens is it's a user add command which would create a user called basil with these user settings these are different user settings that we specified while creating the user now i want to set a password for basil what is the command for that passwd space basil run this command it allow you to set a new password for basil so set a password you want to enter the password two times and that's it the password got set for user basil I want to log in as user basil. What is the command? Su hyphen space basil. This is the command if you want to switch to basil. Right now you are logged in as root, right? And do you agree with me? These are very sensitive command in my Linux machine, right? User add command will create a new user, a very sensitive command group add will create a new group sensitive command password command will allow you to set a password for a user a very sensitive command so all these are very sensitive commands and you must be root to run those a normal user cannot execute these commands you must be root right Currently, I am logged in as root. That's why I am able to execute all these commands. Now, let me switch to user basil. What is the command for that? su space hyphen space basil. Run this command. So, it will ask you for the password. Actually, it didn't ask me for the password. Why? The reason is, it is the root user who tried to log in as basil. It won't ask him for a password. I told you root is a super user, a special user in Linux. He does not need to enter any password. He can log in as any user. That's why generally whenever you try to log in as a user, it will ask you for the password of the user. You must enter the password of the user. But in this case, it's an exception because you run the command as Ubuntu. And if you want to log out from a user, you can run the command logout. Or if you type the command pwd as the user, you can see you are inside the home folder. This is the home folder of Basil. How do you know? You mentioned that when you created the user. Okay. Now I am logged in as user Basil. I am a normal user, I am not root, I am basil. Now I want to log in as user Ubuntu. Su space hyphen space Ubuntu is the command you need to run if you want to log in as user Ubuntu. If I do that, will it ask me for password? Definitely. Because this command I am running not as root but as basil. Basil is a normal user. He want to log into a different user, he must enter the password of the other user. So run this command, it will ask him for a password. He must enter the password. I don't have the password of Ubuntu. I'm not entering, I'll just skip it. But if you have the password, you can enter the password and then you get logged in. And in Linux, there is one configuration file. If you want to log out from a user, so now I am logged in as Basil. I want to log out. You can simply type this command log out and log out or exit. You, you get logged out from Basil. Now you type who am I? You can see now you are logged in as root. You logged out from Basil. Okay. So the next thing
So the next thing. I will show you one file in Linux. This is a configuration file, a user configuration file. The file name is under slash etc. There's a file called passwd. Open this file in an editor, nano editor. You can see the content of the file. And you can see there's an entry for basil down here. There's an entry for giddy. There's an entry for Ubuntu. There's an entry for root. So this is a file which contains the list of uses available in your Linux machine. Basil is a user, Giddy is a user, Ubuntu is a user, like that. There are different different Linux users present in your machine. And you can take a look at this particular file to see the list of uses in your machine. Username, user ID, group ID, the primary group ID, then home folder of the user, which command line the user is using. All this information you can find from this particular file. And that's it. Just want to show you. So, uh, in case you are in doubt whether a user is present or if the user is present, what is the home folder of the user? What is the command line the user is using? What is the user ID? So, all these things you want to see. This is the file that you need to look into. If you create any user in Linux, automatically this file will get an entry for the new user that you are creating. Okay, cool. So now let's talk about how do you give permission to the user? You created a user called Basic. You had added the user to multiple groups. All these things you did and as you know Basil has a set of permissions he get a set of default permissions but he don't have every permission he cannot execute a user add command no user add command can be executed only by the root user he cannot execute a user mod command or password command this should be run only by the root user so let's say let me log in as basil and assume basil is trying to create a new user called aditya so basil is executing this command user add space aditya what this particular command does is it would create a new user called aditya but remember i am running this command not as the root user but as basil user so what will happen it will fail okay sorry i should run the user add command like this sorry for that i just for now just assume user add as well as slash user has been user add both are same we will talk about that in detail when you execute the user add command this is the actual file that is getting executed so don't worry much about it for now just assume whether i run the command user add or i run the command user has been user add both are same no difference so I want to create a new user called Aditya. This is the command that I can run. But will I be able to run it? No, it will tell me you don't have permission. Permission is denied. Because you logged in as user Basil. And Basil does not have permission to execute the user add command. And that's why it would throw you an error saying that permission denied. So now let's say I want Basil to get that perm. Of course, Basil gets certain permissions. He is when you log in as user Basil, you are inside user local Basil folder, which is the home folder of Basil. You want to create a new file, you can create a new file. You want to create a folder, you can create a folder. So all these things are possible as long as you are in the home folder. You type the ls command, you can see the files and folders that you created. So Basil have certain permissions. He can create files and folders inside his home folder, but he cannot do the same thing in outside home folder. So there are some restrictions Basil get when the user get created. And your intention is, I want to give some permission to Basil. I want Basil to be able to execute the user add command. For example, Basil, assume he is a member in my team. I want to give him permission to create a new user. 
I want to give him permission to run the user ad command because he need to do it as part of his responsibility job. But at the same time, I don't want to give full permission to Basil. Basil can execute this command and this command alone. In such situations, you can use a utility called sudo. sudo in Linux allow a normal user such as Basil to execute a sensitive command such as user add. With permissions of a super user, Basil can execute a sensitive command just like root would execute it. That's what sudo means. Using sudo, you can give permission to a normal user to execute a command with super permissions. That's what sudo means. So let us give permission to Basil. And if you want to give sudo permission, only root can do it. So first of all, you have to log in as root user. Then you will give sudo permission to Basil. Let me log out from Basil. Let me log out from Basil and now you type who are my command. You can see you are logged in as root. And now I can edit the sudo permission. The command to edit sudo permission is vi sudo. Run the command vi sudo. Then it will ask you to set the sudo permissions. So run this command vi sudo. It would open a file and you can edit this file. And I am going to add this entry here. Basil space then the remaining thing you can just simply copy paste from the above line then at the end of the line you specify to which command you want to give permission to basil slash user has been user add so my intention is on this particular command basil must have full permission then this is the line i need to put this line, if I put in sudo, it indicates that Basil, a normal user Basil, can execute this command with super permissions using sudo. You have given permission to Basil. You have given sudo permission to Basil. Or whether you want to give permission to group or whether you want to give permission to user, both are possible. You want to give permission to a group, let's say DevOps. I want every members of the DevOps group to be able to execute this particular command. In that case also, use the same syntax. But to indicate that it's a group that you want to give permission, put a percentage symbol in the beginning. It's mandatory. Put a percentage symbol in the beginning to indicate that it's the group that you want to give permission. So what this particular line means is, Every member of the DevOps group can execute this command with super user permissions. So either we can give permission to a user or we can give permission to a group. Okay. So let me save this. You can just press Ctrl X. It will ask you, do you want to save? Give Y, press Enter, and that's it. It got saved. Now let me switch to the base user. Okay, now I am logged in as base. Now let me try to execute user as bin, user add, Aditya. This command will fail with permission error. I should explicitly mention. I want to execute this command with sudo permissions. So Basil, when he want to execute any command with sudo permission, he should put sudo in the beginning. So what this sudo in the beginning indicate is that execute this command with sudo permission. So run this command. It will ask for the password of Basil. Basil has to enter his password once for confirmation and that's it. The command got succeeded or in other words user aditya got created you can confirm by looking at the etc password file if you open the etc password file now you can see a new entry has came for aditya in other words the user aditya got created successfully and remember it is 
Remember, it is the user Basil who created the user Aditya. So that's what sudo is. sudo allow a normal user execute a Linux command with super permissions. That's what sudo is. So Basil can execute the command just like root would execute it. That kind of permission is what sudo means. And there are few more permission topics left which we will cover tomorrow. So if you have any doubts, questions, anyone, any questions? Okay. So today I will, how do I know list of groups? How do I know the list of groups available in my Linux machine? There is one file called etc group. etc password is the file where you can find the list of all Linux users. There is another file called etc group. Inside this file you can see the list of groups. You can see there's a group called Aditya. How come a group got created called Aditya? You already know. When you try to create the user Aditya, you didn't mention a group name. In that case, a group get created with the same name as the username. That would become the primary group of Aditya user. So, yes, there's a group called Giri. I didn't run group at Giri. Still, a group Giri got created. You already know why. How? And DevOps, developers and finance are other groups which I created by running the group add command. So this is the file in Linux which you can take a look at to see the list of groups in your Linux machine. Cool, so we will continue tomorrow, same time, same link, we will continue tomorrow. Few more permission topics are left, we will cover them, then we will move on to a more advanced training on Linux. Right? We are done, almost done with Linux basics training, except some permission topic, we need hardly 15 minutes to cover that. And I request all of you to join exactly at 6.30 so that we can begin the class in time. Okay. Cool. Uh, thank you. Thank you all. And see you tomorrow. Same time, same link. Bye.